So by no, last but no means least, we go over to Melbourne, where hopefully Sean McGinn is lined up and sharing his slides. And Sean is the building's digital leader in our Australasia region and a structural engineer with a passion for applying new technologies and recent developments to his work. Sean, are you there and ready to go? Yeah, thanks, Mark. Um, hopefully you can see my first slide. Uh, up on the screen. Not quite. I think it might just be a lag. OK. Well, I'll start anyways. Uh, thanks, Mark, for the introduction. So my name is Sean McGinn. And good, good morning, evening, afternoon and greetings to you all, wherever you may be. Um, as Mark mentioned, I'm a practicing structural engineer, a uh, bit of a theme building here, and I'm currently leading the digital drive for our, our, our buildings business in Australasia. Um, uh, so my talk is entitled um, Skill Shortages and Augmented Humans in Construction, which is intimating that the latter is a potential means to uh, help assist with the former. And over the next uh, five minutes or so, I'll uh, try to put the skill shortage issue in context here in Australia and illustrate a couple of exemplar solutions via two of my very favourite projects. OK, yep. so I'll talk about skill shortage and um, a couple of my favourite projects in order to illustrate um, uh, digital, fabric digital fabrication in that context. So Australia is often touted as having a chronic skill shortage in engineering. So uh, let's just unpack that one a little bit first. So this is a summary from the government Department of Employment. You keep a close eye on this sort of thing over here. And as you can see, the high level summary is that there's no skill shortage in engineering. Um, and on average, there's um, something like 16 qualified applicants for every position. So on the face of it, that looks all pretty healthy. But uh, digging below the surface a little bit, um, a staggering 80% or 87% rather of qualified applicants uh, were considered unsuitable uh, due to either a lack of relevant experience or insufficient technical capability. And uh, that was particularly uh, a case for those with uh, or senior people with extensive experience. So as a young developing nation, which we still are, um, we've historically relied on importing talent to help supplement our workforce. And in the current climate with CV-19, of course, that tap has been turned abruptly off. So, of course, these uh, stats relate to current skills uh, in our industry and uh, the emerging and future specialist skills in green below are just the subsets of those uh, which are really starting to establishing establish themselves in our industry right here at the moment. Though the number of people who have the capability to deploy them is extremely, extremely limited. So the next couple of project examples show how technology applied by us as designers can be uh, productively used in the real world to benefit projects and utilize the skills that actually are available. This one is Project Q, which is aimed squarely at providing a much higher standard of accommodation for remote Aboriginal communities. This is the current paradigm, which is obviously far from ideal. And this is a potential solution. Uh, it's a deceptively high-tech, modular, flat-packed, off-grid dwelling, uh, including the fixtures and fittings, including furniture as well, that arrives in six containers and can be erected by six people in six days with zero specialist lifting equipment. And critically, um, the local communities were involved in the design development of this, and the intention is that they will build their own houses. And this is really where the technology comes in. So Dennis and John here are two Tiwi Islanders with uh, no construction experience whatsoever. And by replacing the uh, instruction manual with a virtual reality experience, they were able to self-teach how to build this house from scratch. Now, this is what they were looking at uh, through the virtual reality headset. I'll just fast forward it on a little bit. So effectively, it's a step by step for build process in which they can play, pause, rewind, etc. And walk around the model in detail to fully understand the process at the very granular level. And it's proved to be really be a great success. And in fact, the experience and skills that John and Dennis developed throughout this process then formed a positive feedback loop back to the designers that was used to refine the next iteration of the design. Uh, this second project is a more recent one in Brisbane, led by my colleague, colleague uh, Joe Thiang, who's going to present in the next version of this session. And um, it's a high-rise multi-use uh, project right beside the river in Brisbane. Um, have residential on the upper levels and commercial on the lower, and a very complicated reinforced concrete transfer deck between the two. Now, the slide on the screen at the moment is the usual way um, that the design of such a structural element is communicated within our industry. And uh, this has largely been the case for the last century, in fact, when we had no option but to put black lines on um, paper in order to communicate this. Now, it's a pretty abstract representation of what is actually to be built. 
And even myself, we've had quite a few years in the construction industry, we'll find this pretty challenging to understand the complexity that will become apparent in a second or so. Now, the contractor, ProBuild in this case, uh, saw the opportunity to de-risk the construction and engaged us to fully the model the reinforcement in 4D, which opened up an entirely new dialogue whereby the skills of both uh, us as engineers and them as contractors could combine to explore construction sequences, pull breaks, and iron out all of those complex junctions long before it uh, became part of the physical build. And as the model exists in 3D in detail at the moment, we expend, experimented with porting this to virtual reality. And this proves to be really highly effective, much more so than we anticipated. So the guy bottom right in the high vis um, is actually a steel fixer. He fixes reinforcement for a living. And we rarely get to engage with people like this as at this stage of the design. Yet his input proved absolutely invaluable in refining the whole construction and buildability process. Now the video here, um, which I'll start off is, um, I won't play the whole thing, but gives you an idea of the, uh, the complexity of the model, how it was fully resolved in 4D, uh, pore by pore and detail by detail, a full virtual dress rehearsal of the construction sequence itself. And then exactly the same information was used later when we got to sites. So, oops, I'll forward that one. Um, and in this case, we used um, augmented reality, um, which is an accurate image um, of subsequent construction stages could be projected very accurately actually onto the model as it was being built. So this greatly incre increases and improves uh, both the communication and the coordination on site, which drastically reduces um, RFIs, which helps everybody. So this approach is a real game changer, we think, and um, using the Trimble Site Vision device, uh, which the, the chap in the bottom right, Hi-Viz, is using at the moment, um, uh, that's a device we're actually have deployed now in every one of our offices in Australia for exactly this reason, because it makes a huge difference. So these two projects both illustrate uh, the benefits of digital fabrication and how technology can be used to overcome at least some of the, the skill shortages which we're seeing here. And furthermore, it creates an environment, albeit sometimes a virtual one, uh, in which designers and builders can collaborate uh, and lead to much better outcomes for the project. So much more efficient use of materials and available skills and also simpler and safer to build. And I'll leave you with um, one or two quotes here from Bob the Builder from ProBuild, uh, which really speak for themselves. Thank you very much. Thanks, Sean. Uh, your presentation always gives a great insight into techniques that move beyond kind of the additive processes that people traditionally think of when people use the words digital fabrication. Um,